Now live back to the main stadium because not far away from the final of the men's 1500 metres, this is the T46 classification and includes 19-year-old Victorian Matthew Silcox. Let's take you to our commentary team now, Heath Francis and Quentin Hull. Thank you, Karen. The team list, uh, the start list for the uh, T46 men's 1500 metres for arm amputees. And Matthew Silcox is among a field of 11. The 19-year-old Victorian on Paralympic debut. And as we pan through the field, Della Palma of Italy second to the outside. And there's Killer Kaslan of Turkey. But there are three Kenyans in this. An Ethiopian, Abraham Tarbai, the world record holder, 352.50. He took the 1500 5K double in Beijing. So it'll be interesting to see how Silcox goes here in such a class field. And we see the gun and they get away. And you can see Silcox hit the uh, the green and gold and the, the hair out the back. And, oh, he's just getting a bit of a little trouble early as he tries to come across and take up a position on the inside as Hammer of the United States does keep his position on the inside. But look at the wall of Kenyans, the three of them, Chesham, Tarbai and Chariot, all up there early on trying to uh, assert their authority. And it'll be interesting to see how Matthew Silcox goes here in such a quality field. It is a quality field, Quentin, and just like uh, the able-bodied runners, dominated by the usual suspects of Kenya, Algeria, Ethiopia, Tunisia. What we're going to see here, I think, is, uh, is, is great running from the Kenyans. The, 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 the Paralympic champion of Abraham Tarbai, very classy athlete, but my prediction is Samir Nuioa from Algeria to, to be the be the one who ends up coming across the line first here. He looked very impressive in the heats and Matthew Silcox just needs to stick with them as long as he can and uh, he's, he's trained very, very well for this event. Trains at the Knox Athletics Club in, uh, in Victoria. Has, uh, has some great training partners there and I'm sure he'll be very appreciative of all the help that they've given him to get to this Paralympic final. Yeah, Silcox uh, about three or four from the tail and the Algerian you mentioned, Nawiyawa is in uh, the white sling singlet in between the three Kenyans there with Tarbai on the fence, Chariot coming around now to uh, take the lead and uh, Chesham there as well and uh, we also see the orange and black strip of the Ugandan Emong up among them early on and Silcox is just inside of him so the Australian moving on to uh, be about uh, six or seventh midfield as they will come down to the finish line with three laps to go but the three Kenyans Chesham in the, the middle of the screen there he's in front with uh, Tarbai on the inside and Chariot, the third of them. And then it's Noeyawa out of the straight and the Australian Silcox just behind the main group, just backward of midfield or thereabouts. And uh, he's running a decent race so far. And we're seeing the Kenyans do what they do in, in international athletics and that's work as a team. And uh, I think for uh, Noeyawa that the big challenge for him is going to be working against this wall of Kenyans that, that's in front of him. And in Delbu, the Ethiopian is pushing a lot up along the inside to uh, just make his presence felt just on the inside of Nuiyawa there. He's up to about fourth on the inside. So uh, it's still Kenya out in front with Chesham on the outside, uh, just ahead of his countrymen in Tarbai. And behind them is Nuiyawa of Algeria. And then in fourth position is the Ethiopian in Delbu. The Australian back in uh, about seventh or eighth position at the moment. And uh, a bit of a move here from Nuiyawa. He's going to the lead as they get the Bell. and interestingly one of the Kenyans has been dropped off that's Chariot who's off the pace so we get the bell and it's the Algerian Nuiyawa leading them around for the last time about 350 meters from home Nuiyawa of Algeria on the inside of him is Tarbai who is the world record holder the taller of the two Kenyans as they run down the back straight is Chesham and the fourth of the group is from Ethiopia in Indelbu and the Australian Silcox is back in seventh position a long way from the leading group the Algerian Nuiyawa out towards the 200 meter start point just in front he's got uh, Chesham on the uh, Chesham dropping off the main group. Tarboy is the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Kenyan pushing up on the inside. Tarboy gets back to the lead ahead of Nuiyawa. Then it's the Ethiopian in Delbu. But it looks like it's going to be uh, the, uh, the Ethiopian, or should I say the, uh, the Kenyan in uh, Tarboy pushing the uh, foot to the accelerator and racing down the home straight. And Tarboy is going to be victorious and he's going to break the four-minute mark comfortably. Tarboy from Indelbu and then Nuiyawa in the
the bronze medal position. Silcox is running home hard. Here comes uh, the uh, Ugandan Imong in fourth and the Australian in seventh position, I fancy. New world record time, 350.16. And the champion, Abraham Tabai, sets a new world record for Kenya. That was an incredible run by Abraham Tabai. I thought that uh, I thought that Nuiyoa was going to take con take control of that race on the back straight, but Tabai went past him and really extended his lead. Big long strides down the back straight and then round the bends, accelerating, and then when it got onto the home straight, he wasn't going to let anyone go past him. You can see him coming onto the straight here and really extending his lead. Long easy stride that the, only the Kenyans can have. And Yuyo's stride got clipped a little bit there, but it was all Tarbai all the way to the finish. And he defends his crown that he, that, he, that he earned himself in Beijing with a new world record, three minutes 50, world class. And Silcox finished sixth as they came across the line and a time of 3.59.79. So Silcox has gone under the four minutes for the first time. A terrific performance from the Australian. That's a great run by Matt. His, uh, his coach, Richard Huggins, is going to be very, very proud of him. And uh, first Paralympic final, sixth in the world. That's nothing to be ashamed about. Well done, Matthew. Let's hear from him with Amanda Shalala. Your first Paralympic final, you've gone under four minutes. How did you find it out there? Yeah, it was great. I absolutely loved the atmosphere. It was absolutely unreal. I looked up, I didn't see any free seats. It was nuts. Even better, even better than the other day. Yeah, it was, it was a great race. Um, I didn't, I got caught up a bit um, in the last couple of laps. I was trapped and I couldn't really get out. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm happy with the time. Like, it's a PB. Um, first time I've gone under four minutes. Um, yeah, and it's, Really good considering considering the kind of lead up I've had with injury and a bit of illness and stuff. So yeah. You went up against a really top quality field. What was it like for you to be on this sort of stage competing against athletes of that class? Yeah, well it's great really. Like, you know, these are some top athletes, like you know, a lot of the a lot of the Africans, you know, through through Kenyans. It's just it's just like so much different to to what I'm used to, like competing, you know, into club in in Victoria back back in Melbourne. Yeah, so it's a really, really cool experience. Well done, Matthew. Now we'll go to Darren Boyd at the swimming.